on the one side, I won't say on the one hand. Uh, on the other hand. Yeah, because it's Monday. <laughs> we've got iPhone weakness. We've got this DOJ suit. On the other side, we've got high loyalty WWDC, the developer conference coming up. And Apple tends to be very practical about trends like AI, and we haven't really seen their play yet. Yeah, and so we don't know. That's the big question looming ahead. But today's news is this loop price target cut down to 170. They were as high as, I think, 185 pretty recently. And they're basically saying calendar year 2024, sales and earnings could be down. And that ha they're saying that hasn't happened since 2016. And look, a lot of it is happening in China. We know the economy is in rough shape over there. We know in the December quarter for Apple, sales were down 13 percent overall. And just uh, drilling down on just the iPhone in China, really bad data coming out for the first bit of the year. Uh, the most recent data, we have February numbers now, some estimates saying that iPhone sales were down as much as 16 uh, percent for February. We don't know March yet. And of course, we'll get earnings in about a month or so here. But the, the thing is, when does China turn around and how can it turn around? The, you know, Tim Cook was out in China uh, last month and, you know, met with at the business forum, opening up a new store. Does the consumer turn around there? And then the other question is, of course, what is this AI announcement that we're expecting to come at WWDC? How does that drive, again, iPhone sales? And then further out, September, we have the regular iPhone event, the iPhone 16. What can that do on the AI front that makes people want to upgrade? Not because, you know, they need a new phone, but because they want the new iPhone and maybe they'll upgrade a little sooner than expected. We've got the, the China situation that's not necessarily just about the Chinese economy. We see some possibilities that that could be turning more positive, but also about Chinese sentiment toward a company like Apple. And a little company called Huawei is, is causing problems for Apple, too. And they, they started making phones again last year. And we've seen evidence that they're eating into Apple's market share. You know, for the first couple of years throughout COVID, Apple, when Huawei stopped making phones, we heard a lot from Apple about how many people in China were switching from Android back to iPhone. And now we're kind of seeing it go the other way. So that is another one. Luke points out as well. Don't count out Xiaomi, by the way, which is often referred to as the Apple of China, also causing pressure uh, and more competition. So, yeah, there could be a little bit of nationalistic buying on mm -hmm. that sense and also just, you know, literally Huawei fans excited that there's a new Huawei phone that they can buy. Uh, that's that's definitely hurting them. Um, by the way, those are cheaper phones. For investors, though, who are wondering when there might be an entry point for Apple, I can't help but notice that Apple has some advantages in the AI era. One, uh, everybody, you know, Google, Microsoft, want placement on the iPhone and are willing to pay for it. So pay a lot of money, too. Yeah, a whole, billions upon yeah. billions of dollars for it. And then also, a lot of what these companies are doing are trying to vertically integrate in order to get better performance out of AI. Apple's already vertically integrated. They design their own chips and hardware and software. When they make a move in AI, it could be a very fast move. And, and just that, but then the question becomes, as we heard two weeks ago, that they're partnering with Google again, or likely to partner with Google, and in China, likely to partner with Baidu. So what does that relationship look like? Which ways, that seems like almost better for Google than it is for Apple. You know, if they're relying on that, it gives Google more, that's why we've seen Google or Alphabet shares recover so much the last two weeks on this news, that it, it either gives them more exposure for Gemini AI, or they're going to collect, um, money from Apple as Apple, if Apple ends up licensing Gemini for all these users too. So that becomes a real question. What kind of vertical integration do they have? What is their own internal AI thing? And we might not hear that till the next iPhone cycle because I can bet you what they'll do something like, okay, if you want the best AI stuff, you got to buy that pro model. You really think Apple's going to pay though? Or is Google going to have to pay for the pro? It, it feels like they would, be, I feel like it would be the other way around. We just don't know. But <laughs> yeah. yes, of course, they want access to, you know, a billion plus iPhone users. Of course, that's, but it's a good thing for them either way. And that's already baked into them. They pay billions of dollars to all these other platforms in order to be dominant on this platform. So that's, and that, by the way, DOJ doesn't like that. Right. Yeah.